Hey everyone, welcome to Force Conversations, the show where two scruffy looking nerf herders like to get together and talk about all things Star Wars. My name's Jay. And I'm a Death Trooper! <laughs> welcome to the show. How you doing, Death Trooper? I'm alright! Why do you sound like you're constipated? I've got funny voice thing that you can't understand me! <laughs> alright, <laughs> it's not really a Death Trooper, it's me, Colin. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> Um, so look, Jay, before we get cracking, mm. I've got a warning, the listeners and the viewers. Oh, yeah. My dogs are crazy today and they're making lots of noise. And my wife's out. I've only just got home from work, so I can't lock them away because that wouldn't be fair. So expect barking in this recording. Apologies now. But they, they were actually just barking just before we started and they've stopped, so maybe they'll be good. Do you think they will be good? Yeah, so. of course they will. Look at that face. Yeah, mm. <laughs> and we're not talking about my face podcast, isn't this? <laughs> might bite you, but you know that's that same. Um, yeah. Before we uh, get into news, um, we should say a happy birthday for earlier this week, King Jaffy Jim, Jaffa, James Earl Jones. Where is that king? Yeah. Mufasa, Luke. Mufasa, <laughs> yeah, Simba. So, uh, um, yeah, James Earl Jones turned uh, 86, I think it was, uh, two days ago. He's getting old, isn't he? Oh, yeah, he has been around a while. This is CNN. CNN. This is CNN. Oh, yeah. So you're good at the old voices. I'm rubbish. If I had a echoey voice, <laughs> I am your father. <laughs> oh, no, it's impossible! <laughs> <laughs> mm, okay, yeah, look. So happy birthday, James Old James. <laughs> happy birthday. The voice of Vader, so we, you know, we should say happy birthday to him because he's awesome. We and salute you. We do. We salute Lord you. Vader. So anyway, other than that, right, you had anything let's... exciting going on this week? Oh no, not really. Lots of work, which is never fun. Um, right. I've been trying to tell people. I'm, my job involves talking to a lot of different people around around the country, and. Uh, Every time I meet someone new, I try and tell them about. First question is, "Oh, do you like Star Wars?" And you'll get like the odd, mm, "Yeah." You either get someone who says, "Yeah," but then you know, you know they're not super cool like us, or people. they really do. And then the really do people, I have to then tell them or show them the podcast and that. Sometimes it's not appropriate because they, these are work people that I'm trying to uh, ah, screw it. Co- convince I know what I'm doing. But, yeah. <laughs> so if there is anyone that I've talked to and you've decided to check it out, hello. welcome. Yeah. But, yeah, I hope they have. But you know, I'm not going to shout anyone out until, until I know for a fact. <laughs> <laughs> and, and the way you'll know is because they will leave a comment at the bottom of this video. Yes, and they will also uh, subscribe, hopefully, and they will uh, like subscribe it. to the podcast. They might even leave a review on the podcast on iTunes. You can do that, you know. Oh, that would be leave amazing. That would be amazing. And also, you know, if, if you're listen to this on the Taylor network of podcasts and of course drop a note on our feed or you can go on our Facebook group and say whether or not you think we're a good addition to the um <laughs> to the network. Yeah. I hope I hope you think we do. <laughs> um so yeah. So there's we lots of ways and nice comments this past week though. That was that was pretty cool, eh? Right? We did. Some nice chaps um said some nice things, so that's and, that's really uh, kind of them. We appreciate even, it. Even the publisher of the um Galactic Atlas uh seemed to yeah. leave a, a comment on Twitter which was uh quite I was quite happy with that. I was like, oh, cool. Yeah. You, you checked so, us out. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and man, if you want you how did he know? Who told him? I don't know, it's weird, isn't it? Yeah. Um but if he does want to send us anything to review <laughs> we're happily obliged and we won't give and, a bias to review at all and if he wants to appear and come on and talk about the stuff you know that too any any yeah. of these guys that write these books you know if anyone checks yeah. us out i know like uh john jackson miller and people like that they're on the group so maybe they've had a little look and uh yeah oh you know, i keep kathy keep keeps on. asking but i just say no yeah i mean we're a bit too high profile for that she, She's a bit of a bore, but we did uh, get a note from um, John Davy, didn't we? Um, and yeah. he's a uh, he's a um, uh, performer. Uh, perform- I don't know what the official type of uh, there's a there's a proper word for this, so I'm not going to say the wrong thing. But he's an actor, 
And uh, he's in um, lots of uh, British stuff. He's in loads of Doctor Who. He's famous for playing a Cyberman in a key episode. Um, and he's also been in... Uh, he was in uh, Force Awakens. He was on the Jeddah planet. He's one of the characters in the background. So uh, he's dropped us a note, said that he'd be keen to have a chat. So I'm going to awesome. try and get in touch with him and get that organised for That'd the future. That would be very cool. That would be very cool. So that's coming up in the future, guys. A little look so, forward uh, to 2017. All the exciting stuff that's possibly going to happen. Like, we, <laughs> we'll probably review the new film. Maybe. Mm. But, Maybe. Um, yeah, now that we've uh, spent some time blowing our own trumpets, um, <laughs> <laughs> shall we uh, get on with what's what this week? The news! What's the news, Jay? <laughs> oh, I don't know what that voice is. Um, listen, we've got some news. The news that we've got is, first of all, <laughs> let's talk about some late changes to hey, Rogue One. He's just playing around on his phone while we're doing a podcast. What's going on? Look at uh, my notes. Show, there's there's a little white screen. The white little, screen. Oh, no. <laughs> no secret for you, viewers. <laughs> You've got to join in with the podcasters and wait, wait to hear what we've got to say. Um, right, so... There was a little story around um, the fact that all these late changes and reshoots and all these bits that um, happened to Rogue One and everyone was getting all worried about, actually, that's what led to some of the movie's most iconic scenes. That's right. Or, or one major iconic scene in particular. Which, which one could which, that be? Of course, spoilers, right? But if you haven't seen the movie yet, you probably don't want to. Um, mm. If you haven't seen it yet, just turn it off and go and watch it. Yeah, exactly. What's wrong with you? Um, but yeah, this was uh, the scene right at the end of the movie where all the rebels are handing the plans to each other. All along the ship, they get on to Tantor IV, passing oh, it on. It's it so cool. To, uh, it is so cool. But the, so originally, it still had that bit where everyone's passing the plans until it gets to Leia. However, Vader, that bit weren't there. So What? Right? So that that was part of the late additions to the movie, where they added Vader, cutting everyone down, because they wanted to show Vader the height of his villainy and give the fans something special, which it was bloody special, right? So, yeah, that was, um, that was something that hadn't been in there um, beforehand. Uh, that came from... Uh, that was uh, the editor, John Gilroy, who was talking to Yahoo!, about that this was a whole interview and and the the three news articles we've got today um the information comes from um starwarsnewsnet.com um which is a great uh, source for all things star wars they got, are brilliant they are so good they've got great news stories um you know they they let you know all the stuff that's happening they also write their own news stories and they they're very good at sourcing information um, so definitely go on to their website and all, all the things we talk about, check them out because there's full articles with interviews and a lot more mm. on there. So it's definitely worth. And we always put the links the, in the um, show we, notes, don't we? Links underneath, yeah, so you can see what's going on there. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's, it's not. There's no real big news stories this week, to be honest. They're, they're all quite small, and this was just stuff that was a little bit interesting. It was interesting that Vader wasn't in that scene, you know, so that bit did exist, but without him. Uh, what do you make of that? What do you think? It would have been a bit lame without him, right? Can't, I'm just trying to imagine what it would have been like. It would, I it's mean, just, oh, oh quick, run, run, run <laughs> to the sh- What are they running for? I, mean, oh, yeah. I don't know. Uh, maybe I'm just... it played out a little bit differently. I mean, it doesn't really go into details, but maybe it was a little bit different. Maybe they were being chased and they, they, yeah. you know, they were trying to get this done quickly or, you know, who knows, because obviously they wanted to make sure that they had uh, uploaded the plans and got them onto the Tantive. So that first bit they're running, they're not on Tantive 4 yet, are they? Oh, right. goes, launch yeah, that yeah, door yeah. there yeah. is when they've got onto it. So it could have been a little bit of that, you know, that ship's in in, in the bad shape and the the, um, the, the Devastator's right there, probably going to shoot them or something and they want to make sure they get onto that ship. Do you think they might have had Stormtroopers after them? Maybe. I mean, because of reshoots, we don't know what was that. I mean, I'm sure that when the Blu-ray comes out, there'll be some stuff on there and you know Disney are pretty good at giving you those little bits as time because ah we we were going to do this and you know so mm. maybe we'll get to see um but yeah so it, it's, it probably played out a lot different but then they thought you know what we need 
Vader. Who doesn't want Vader in that scene? And, uh, I want more Vader. I could have watched that scene for like another like 20, 30. I suspect you'll be watching that on repeat a lot. <laughs> um, yeah. My, I tell you, the only thing that I'm slightly not bothers me, but niggles is um, there's a lot, a lot of people talking about all the reshoots and what it could have been and what the what it was going to be and what it is, you know, what ended up being. I think really we just didn't, just need to focus on the fact that the film is bloody brilliant. Yeah, it doesn't matter that that wasn't the original. Well, what they gave us on the day that it came out, it's not like it came out and then they reshot it. Yeah, they the day it came out, so the film it was supposed to be is the film they released. Yeah, as far as I'm concerned, and it's a bloody good film. And yes, there are some scenes that I'd love to see that they potentially had, and I, I oh, of course. just more for the visuals because yeah, I think yeah, like yeah. the C and Jin and Cassian potentially running through the um, Scarif and mm-hmm. seeing... Where um, they've got the plans. And, yeah, um, with uh, and that that bit that was shot in Canary Wharf, which we didn't actually see in the film in the end. No, we did see Canary Wharf. Yeah, but you didn't see the bit when they're running with the K2SO. No, that's them. right, yeah, yeah. And uh, so all that sort of bit, I'd love to have seen that, just because it would have looked cool. But yeah, of Like course. I said, I'm glad... there'll be deleted scenes that you'll get to see, because they're... Com- I mean, obviously, they're in trailers, so they're completed... It's not like the yeah. effects aren't done or anything like that. But, you know, all films have reshoots, right? And it's part of the development process. And, yeah. you know, it's like anything. You're putting this together and maybe this yeah, doesn't work so well. Part that of that work, process. So you change it, you take bits out. And, you know, reshoots are there because when you're editing it, you might find bits that, oh, we need this. Okay, let's go reshoot. Or let's redo that scene because it doesn't work so well in the greater context of the movie. So... <laughs> You know, that's that's why it happens. There's the Death Trooper again. I've got two Death Troopers right here. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I've only got one. <laughs> I have got a glowing Vader. You have got a glowing Vader. That's pretty damn cool. I only yeah. turn him on for you. He, he gets turned on when I'm on screen. <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> oh, I also got this. Google Cardboard. <laughs> Is it any good? <laughs> Uh, it's all right, yeah. It's yeah. Good. Oh, cool. Well, that's anyway, <laughs> so enough of that. Um, next story, Jay, is <laughs> episode eight, filmed in Bolivia, and the possible return of a familiar ship. Yes. Um, okay, so this um, came from a Bolivian fan page called uh, Prenza Imperial. Um, and apparently, uh, filming took place in... Many Bolivians died to bring us this information. <laughs> information, yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> apparently, uh, the filming took place in June of 2016 for two days. Um, and it was in a place called Salar de Uyuni, which is, um, they're like salt plains, right? So they said they used some nice lighting to give it a really good effect and everything. Um, no major cast were there, but stormtroopers were seen running around and doing stuff. And then there's a um, there's a picture um, which is on stolznewsnet.net.com, uh, but um, I'm going to put it in probably now while we're talking. And um, it's of a cockpit. Um, and the cockpit looks like a B-Wing cockpit. <gasps> right? I love B-Wings. I know B-Wings are cool, right? So um, maybe there's a, a modern um, resistance version of the B-Wing, or maybe it's that been modified cool. or something. That would it's be cool. It's only a cockpit, but you can see, like, in the picture, you'll see there's... Um, sort of the scaffolding around the cockpit like to hold it up and everything oh, and right. the way that it's set up it looks like it would be a b-wing and it is a, the, the cockpit looks very much like a b-wing cockpit so that would be quite cool the um i the, love the, to see the a again. transport that leia is on also has a very similar cockpit yeah it did yeah that was very but, beamish but the way that when you see the picture and um, the way that the uh, the layout of it looks it looks like it could be a b-wing so you know, obviously everything like this is speculation because this report came from a, a couple of people who worked on the crew. They oh. haven't given any names or anything like that. Um, 
but this is where they, they say they got their information, this is where they got the photo from. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, as it's all speculation, let's speculate this a B-Wing. Um, yeah! So, you know, what do you reckon, dude? What do you think about having B-Wings in uh, episode 8? Yeah, I would love it. I mean, there's no reason why, I mean, we've seen the X-Wings, so there's no reason why other familiar ships can be in there. A-Wings, I love, I've seen an A-Wing. As someone who's read, you've read all of the books now, haven't you, that have come out of the canon? Or uh, pretty much? Um, the only two I haven't read yet that on my um, phone to listen to are Lost Stars and the, the uh, Battlefront okay, Twilight so, one. So, um, but they're not really core canon ones, right? Well, they are Lost canon, Stars but they're not... Is... Yeah, but they're not, it's not about the main characters, is it? I don't think. Um, it's, it, it takes you from the age of the uh, Empire right through to the First Order. Um, oh, does it? Yeah. Oh, OK. Um, well, I look forward to reading that, man. <laughs> um, yeah, so there's, is there anything in the books or in the comics or anything that would suggest that after the Rebellion, you know, like the ships, that they just transition over to the Resistance, right? They're, they're not all, like, wiped out or anything that you've seen so far. No, um, okay. I mean obviously. I'm I mean obviously we. What, what, that I've not read well, yet, so that well, what they talk about the B wings got taken out. What they talk about in um, the aftermath books is that Momoffa's approach is she wants to demilitarize as much as possible, mm-hmm. and so basically they get rid of near enough all of well that planet. I mean I haven't at the moment because obviously they still got to have the battle of Chaku, but. Um, they will, after that, potentially get either have them all destroyed, or they're not going to. Ba- they're going to basically get rid. I think she was saying something about eighty percent. She wants to get rid of the, the military, right? And she wants a new republic to be all about, you know, peace and stuff right, like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which again is all setting up why Leah needs to create the resistance in the background, yeah. To to have some so, kind of yeah. So it's to uh, do with having the support uh, of the yeah. Um, so yeah, what, all the ships though. Um, what's supposed to have happened to them? Have they said? Well, no, but I'm guessing most of them, if you look at the Battle of Jakku, um, get wiped out. Or, I don't know why I do that. <laughs> we can go back to Jakku. Jakku! That <laughs> That's my not very good impression of Finn. <laughs> Maybe I should just stop trying to do impression. Uh, <laughs> um, so... <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it makes sense for them to go to uh, the resistance, doesn't it? And, and people like Wedge and that, I mean, obviously they've still got their ships, you know, they're, they're not going to lose them. Um, so, yeah, I don't know, really. Don't, I mean, it is up in the air. It would be cool, yeah. though, to have B-Wings, because they are damn cool. Ships. It will be. There is something to talk about in the comics, which talks about some ships. I'll tell you about that in a bit. OK, cool. That's coming up. Coming, coming up soon. <laughs> on Force Conversations. <laughs> right, so let's go on to the next one. Come on, let's get this, this news done. This is the last one. And, uh, oh, yeah. I missed this one, actually. This is non-news. Non-news! So, what do you think happened to the Hammerhead crew in Rogue One, Jay? Well, it seems that they escaped. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Well, yeah. I haven't read this little news story, Jay, but... Okay. It didn't look like to me they could probably escape from that. <laughs> I uh, well, um, so, so, so John Noll from ILM, um, he says that the Hammerhead crew did escape. So when you saw the Hammerheads at the end of uh, Rogue One, Star Destroyers are crashing down through the shield gates, um, and they said it's probably hard to tell this because it's very subtle, but lifeboats are all gone from the hammerhead. <laughs> <laughs> so little escape craft. They, he says that they put it in that any escape craft that may have been on the ship, they're not there. Do um, the, so the uh, hammerhead escape? And do the escape them. pods look like little hammers? Who knows? Because it's very subtle, and it, this is what he said: it, it's very subtle thing, and it's probably hard to tell. But <laughs> they Look, I'm just glad this. to know that happened. I feel much Are better you? now. No, because oh, everyone because, else died. Yeah, so, and, oh, and it's spoiler. Like, uh, <laughs> so, you know, okay. They were. They probably had time because they were pushing the ships down, and it took quite a while. Yeah, and they planned to do it, so they could have had yeah. minimum crew anyway. Yeah, 
but once the ship started going down, why did they not just stop their engines and just like fly? Reverse. All right, all right. Anyway, uh-huh. there's some non news. Mm-hmm. There's this week's non news. So um, mm. that's it. That's the news for this week. <laughs> all right. Well, that was a load of rubbish. That I thought but we was particularly talk- interesting that came out this week, and so I really scraped the barrel for it. And this is what we got. So <laughs> well, wait, like wait to free. wait till you hear what theories we've got. Oh, the theory. Now, I, I quite like the theory, to be honest. <laughs> okay. I, mean, I, haven't, I haven't watched the video for the theory yet. But oh, right. I've thought about this for a while anyway. <laughs> Um, yeah. So yeah. <laughs> anyway, right. So that's our news. That's the news. All right. Um, now we're gonna do some reviews. <laughs> reviews, reviews, reviews. What we've been reading. What we've been watching. <laughs> <laughs> you're you're in a very. <laughs> I tell you what it is. Day. I'm a little bit overtired. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm a little bit tired and emotional, guys. So let's uh, see what happens next. Um, <laughs> so we're going to start with Rebels Warhead. Yes, Warhead. Warhead. Yeah. Um, so, so that was an episode. Uh, the rough plot was, I'm trying to remember because it seems like a long time ago. Um, so Imperial it was a traitor droid. Oh, yeah, Imperial Infiltrator Droid. So, basically, most of the gang have to go off on a mission, and they leave Seb and that not good robot, funny robot, and so Chopper. Seb, Chopper, and AP5. Yeah, are left yeah. on Zeb's wherever left they are. in charge. Pardon? Zeb left in charge. Yeah, left in charge on this, on this sort of base, and they've got to do inventory, fun times. And then a I robot, the and then basically, like, the Empire... Oh, is it the Empire? Yeah, it is the Empire. They yeah, shoot a load of people. Hmm? Yeah, they're the bad guys. Yeah, I was, <laughs> I was so confused with what bloody time zone we're in. <laughs> Every bloody comic or something I read is in a different bloody time zone. Doesn't mean it in. Anyway. <laughs> so that, okay, so that bit started kind of similar to Empire Strikes Back, yeah. which I thought was quite well, cool. The... Even the music that they used was very yeah, similar. Yeah, that was cool. That uh, was cool. And the sound effects they used for the pods shooting out of the Star Destroyer. Um, mm. That was quite cool. That was very cool. So, um, and then they shoot out these Imperial droids to go and search. So basically, Thrawn is looking for the rebel bases, basically. And so he's sending out these droids all over the place to feed back. And um, this one droid lands on the planet they're on, and the droid looks like the original Ralph McQuarrie design yep. of C-3PO. That's right, it's the Ralph McQuarrie concept for 3PO, which is pretty damn cool that now that is in the canon as a yeah. type of character. I, I really like that. They just repainted it, it's a different colour. Yeah, but yeah. And I, 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 and I, I that, that awesome. design's cool. Mm. The only thing is, I saw this interview with Anthony Daniels once and he was talking about it and he and he was saying about how um he wasn't going to do Star Wars he read he read the script and it was a load of rubbish and you know stupid being a robot and then he saw the Ralph McCoy drawing and he looked into the eyes of the drawing and he yeah he felt the soul of the character yeah. and he oh he, he knew <laughs> straight away he had to be this character and he connected with it and all this really arty farty bollocks. Um, so be that careful ever since I... he, he's the kind of guy who might be willing to come <laughs> on and talk to us. So... <laughs> he might. He does all this stuff, man. <laughs> <Does he? laughs> yeah. I don't think he will. No. Um, because I <laughs> instantly hated that droid as soon as he said that. Uh... <laughs> really? No, but it, it, that was a particularly annoying thing that he did. I don't like any of that. Oh, well, yeah, there's a few of those. <laughs> yeah, I don't like that stuff. Anyway, so, going back to the thing. So this droid looks like the nice droid, but actually it's also this, like, turbo attack droid, and it morphs into another <laughs> thing. Transforms. Yeah? Cool. That, well, that was a bit, didn't look very good, but that was cool. You didn't like that? No. No? Okay, I thought you might. No. Oh. But, let's just cut to a chase. I actually like this episode. I thought Me it was fun. Me too. I really I it was liked fun. this episode. I really, really liked it, yeah. I, I actually did. thought it was loads of fun. Yeah. I, I, I really like 
AP, what's his face? He's my favourite. I was yeah. so happy that we got the yeah. of him. Yeah, me too. He is just sarcastic and he just rips the crap out of and, like, and actually, Zen, like, He's brilliant. Yeah, and he actually made Chopper more more fun because Chopper on his own would be yeah. annoying, but mm-hmm. between them, they good dance yeah. between them. That's um, a good point, actually, because I generally don't like Chopper, but in I this know. episode I did. Yeah, so I, I like the two of them together. They work. Yeah. yeah. Um, so it was a good fun episode. It was. It wasn't. Again, the annoying bit. I'm still a little bit annoyed because obviously I'm so hyped up from that mid-season trailer. Well, they get to those too. stories. Nah, that's coming later, mate. <laughs> so they've got. So potentially they've got all those episodes to go. They want to save that stuff towards the end. I mean, potentially it was a filler episode. Yeah. But it a was a fun filler. one. Yeah, it was fun. I really enjoyed it. It was fun. They they had a laugh with Zeb. Uh, a little bit of a bit of corniness in there every now and again, but I mean, but it, it wasn't it worked, really. It worked in this episode. Yeah, and yeah. to be honest, the actual drama was quite good. They came up with quite a good solution for dealing with the the problem, yeah. which I won't go into. And then, yeah, it was good. And there was some well, good you can bits. go into it because it's right. You know, all this stuff's got to be spoilerific because. Uh, but what's the point? Say, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's not. It's not exactly in the moment. <laughs> Listen, I'm gonna say. Uh, there's because a robot and it was going to blow up. <laughs> yeah, but it, it kind of ties into... But they got rid of it in a good way. To, yeah. to Fulcrum, doesn't it, as well? Yeah, and like, Fulcrum got involved. Oh, oh, lamb chops. Yeah. And and uh, and Fawn. And again, uh, that that is going to get start annoying, I think. Fulcrum that? and Fawn's relationship. And, oh, well, does he know? Doesn't he bit, know? Isn't it? They're going to keep it going for a while. Um, but he, Fawn knows. He probably does. That's my, that's he my bet. Does. He Fawn knows. Does. Yeah, he probably Fawn knows. Mm-hmm. And you know, that when this episode started, so they're on that planet that has those creepy, nasty spider things. And I hate spiders, right? Mm. So when it started and they were there, I was like, oh, God. Because mm. they're disgusting. Right? I hate them. And then when when they got found with the, uh, the 3PO infiltrator droid, right? Mm. And they were dead, I was happy. <laughs> and I was like, oh, okay, this episode might not be so bad. And it was like, I quite like this droid. He took them out. Good. Um, oh. And uh, I did kind of like when he turned into the, the battle version of the Infiltrator. I thought it was quite cool where he, he changes his long, lanky thing and just busts everyone up and then change back into protocol. Like, yeah. protocol mode into sort of battle mode, right? Mm. Um, I kind of liked that. As you say, I thought that the humour was good in this episode. Um, the story was fun, you know, it was fun, it was good to see more of Zeb, because we don't really get to see much of him, oh. you know, he's kind of always... He's probably the best character, bit. one of the best I, ones. I like Hera best, I, I like Hera, and I'd like to see a bit more mm. of her, I think she's a cool character. I, I bet you would. <laughs> with her Popeye arms, but, because you know, <laughs> really, with her, you don't really get very much, she'll normally fly the ship a bit and say to them, oh, guys, uh, you need to go here, and then, then it'll be about Ezra and... Kane and, she's the know. boss yeah but you don't really see her do much and I'd like to see her do a bit more because I mean even if you go to a new dawn you sort of got a bit more of mm. her in that and you know with, with her dad being Cham and all that kind of stuff I want to see more of this character I want to see them do more with her but that being said back to this episode um, it was good to see more of Zed well, what... it, it, he, he has good interaction with um, uh, Chopper and with AP5 because I like the, the whole you know I hate you and uh, I hope we're not going to start getting on. Kind of Do thing. your impression of him cool. again. Of who? AP5. I don't have an impression of AP5. You do. No, it's just, uh, very droll. That's it's just it. like that, yeah, but it's good. not really an impression. I can't remember oh, yeah, what like like. Sounds but... like him. <laughs> hey, um, um, my, my, I think, now, I might be confused, because it might be something else, but I'm sure my wife made the comment saying, is he voiced by Alan Rickman? I said, no, Alan Rickman's dead. But, <laughs> but he does sound like But, yeah, he's got that Rickman in him. <laughs> um, Snape. It was good uh, seeing, um, you know, Fulcrum giving the rebels the info and that side of things a yeah, little bit. Yeah. Um, and, of course, by the end of it, Thrawn has narrowed his search to, like, 94 planets or something. When, when he said, I've narrowed my search, I thought he was going to go, they've got to be they're in this area and there's going to be yeah, like the three system. planets or something. Yeah. No, no, 94 planets. Like, oh, okay, so we've got a whole season 
of them trekking it across like the whole galaxy until so eventually they have a, a run in. Well, so I hope he's not using your there. Galactic Atlas, Atlas to find it because <laughs> half the planets are missing. Until the update. <laughs> until the update. Until the update. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, I enjoyed it. I thought it was a good episode. Um, it was fun. It was a, it was a filler, but it was a good filler. If they're going to do films, that's how they should do them. And you know what? The two episodes before that were proper story ones. They were, yeah. This was better than both of those. It was, absolutely. Absolutely. So, so good return yeah. to form. Yeah. Uh, nice, nice different episode. Yep. Well done. I give it four out of five. Yeah, I'll give it, I'll give it about a... A three and three quarters. Mm, oh, maybe we should do it out of ten. We should do it out of ten because you can get a better sort of scope there. I would give it a seven point five out of ten. Mm, okay, I'll give it seven point six nine out of ten because <laughs> I wanted to get sixty nine in there somewhere. <laughs> right. So next, um, I'm going to have a rant. Okay. Well, not a rant, but I was thinking to myself the other day, where the bloody hell is the Star Wars trailer for episode eight? And what is it called? Ah, and, okay. And so I thought to myself, look, I'm 100% certain that we knew exactly what the film was called and we knew we'd seen trailers by well, this Ryan time. Brian Johnson knows what it's called. Yeah, I bet he does, <laughs> bugger. Um, so... Again, I, and I've seen a couple. I've listened to a couple of other podcasts, and they talked about, "Oh no, we're not going to hear anything to the Super Bowl. We didn't last time." I don't think and, we are. But look, at, I look back on it. The film's title for Force Awakens was announced on the sixth of November, twenty fourteen. So a good month and a year, a year and a month, thirteen months, however you want to call it, a long time yeah, before. They had a different task that time yeah they did but then the trailer came out on the 28th of november the first teaser trailer and i loved that trailer i remember when i first watched it i was on dog training my wife was training ted as you can see he's really brilliantly <laughs> trained now um and i just suddenly saw the fact that this trailer would come out and i watched it in the middle of the training and got told off so <laughs> why haven't we got it now Right, here's how I see it, is that if we are going to get a Super Bowl, which would only be a teaser, let's, let's put it this way. Now, Disney have a lot of money, but I don't think Disney likes to just throw away money, right? Super Bowl gets a huge viewership. I can't wait for Super Bowl. Um, but this year, for a minute advert for 60 seconds... It's going to cost five million dollars, right? And, five million dollars. And Marvel have, oh, well, Disney, Marvel have got Guardians of the Galaxy two coming out. Um, maybe you're going to see something for one of their other movies that's coming later in the year as well. If they're going to spend the money, I have a feeling they might put it there because that's a lot of money spent. If we do get anything for Star Wars you'll A, get an announcement of the title before Super Bowl, which is only in a few weeks' time, right? They'll tell you the title. And then you can pretty much go, okay, we're probably going to see something. You're looking at 30 seconds, right? It's going to be something I, short. Because I, mean, I think that the full trailer <coughs> is going to be at, um, at a celebration, a celebration because people were not happy with last year's celebration and yeah. the stuff that they got yeah. there. They, they thought it was a bit light. So this year... They're going to really ramp it up and try and get... When Celebration more. April is April. this year? Yeah, it's That's April. Right. Yeah. So, so if you do get something in February, so the beginning of February Super Bowl, you're going to get something like a 30-second thing max, and you'll know because you'll get the title come out just before, right? If you don't get the title before, you're probably not getting that Super Bowl, but you'll see Guardians of the Galaxy and stuff like that. I mean, it's a good point you made about <clears throat> Disney not needing really to spend money to market. Okay. I mean, because you're right, I mean... With my sensible hat on. People know that December is going to be Star Wars. Yeah. Now. And right? they and they and they weren't going to confuse people by advertising it while Rogue One was still at cinemas. Mm. So it's definitely going to it's definitely well well Rogue One's still showing at cinemas. There's no way they're going to release it. I get that. 
So hopefully Rogue One's going away soon. <laughs> oh, I think it's, it's it, not it's pretty, finished, it's pretty much it, gone it's now. It's finished isn't it? um, consecutive showings, so yeah. there are some places. So there's still random showings. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so that's almost out of the way. So I guess the timeline's ripe for the title to be released, and so I would say it's probably going to be next week or so. What do you reckon? If it does, then you're probably looking at a 30 second teaser at Super Bowl. But I don't think they. I they don't need to put it on Super they, Bowl. They don't need to put it on Super Bowl. But because Super one, is, Super Bowl I know what Super Bowl. Viewership. Yeah, but it gets such a high viewership that that's the But they don't to need to it. do it, though. As you said, they it's, don't need to spend that it's the million, premium five place, million pounds. It's the premium place for adverts. If they don't put it on Super Bowl, then it's just going to drop online. But they normally try and put it with some kind of big event. I mean, if you remember with the... Because uh, the, other, the, other, the other factor, Jay, is... Because they, they and, put um, the Episode 7 one in the middle of a, a, a very important yeah. game as well. So, yeah. Um, which, which, if I remember, was an Eagles game, and I was very happy because I was watching it. <laughs> but um, yeah, you know, so you're going to see it. I think that's where they put it. It's prime time TV. The most amount of people are watching it. You okay. know. Well, look, the one thing I'll say about Force Awakens that I thought Disney were particularly clever about was I, ne- I didn't see many adverts for Force Awakens from Disney, but I saw a mega load of adverts for products and services that was using Star Wars Force Awakens to sell their products and so therefore was promoting Force Awakens. So like you see all the toy adverts, mm-hmm. you see the Duracell advert, you see you know, every there's every single type of product had a Star Wars promotion and they were the adverts you could see. You were seeing millions of adverts all promoting Force Awakens, but none of them paid for by Disney. If anything, they were paying Disney to do it. Mm. And so, to me, this is where I think Disney is super clever because they just let everyone else promote it st- yeah, for yeah. the film. They don't need to do it. Everyone knows it's coming. The, the as you first said. thing that will happen is a title. That before yeah. any of that, you're going to yeah. get a title, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, but... So what is? So again, Willie, um, one of our brilliant, fantastic friends on our Facebook group. Asked us the question earlier on because uh, I put it up on our on our Facebook group, which you can find at Jay at Force Conversations on Facebook. Yeah. So Warren Baggett. Uh, yeah. I don't know. Should I say last names? <laughs> so, um, sure. Why not? Yeah. Yeah. yeah what, of course, that's his name. Say their name. Or Warren. Warren B Man. No, B Dude. Yeah, you know, it's Warren Baggett. Um, if, if you were on the group, you would see that. <laughs> B, B dog. <laughs> um, anyway, old Warren. He's asked us, "What do we think the title of episode eight should be?" So this is quite a oh. fitting question. <clears throat> hmm. Well, the one that they're going around is "Legacy of the Force," isn't it? That's one that people are are, are talking about. Um, Which would know, work I mean... if 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 if, they, if all three films have got the Force in it. Yeah, but I don't want that. Yeah, I, not Star Wars. You know, I haven't, you know, this is something I've not really thought about. Because what? I, I haven't. I just really haven't thought about this. Um, oh well, maybe I'll let you have a little think about it, and you can talk about it next week if you want. But uh, let's do that because it's one of those things that um, you know. The last let, thing how about everybody uh, send in their thoughts, and we will say what we think is the best one. <laughs> yeah, let's do it that way. Let's cheat. Yeah, let's <laughs> cheat. <laughs> um, I, I mean, I would like something completely different. For example, so um, the first order strikes back. Yeah, something <laughs> really different that we um, return of the Snoke. Um, <laughs> um, no, like return rise of, of rise of the Sith. <laughs> um, I don't know. So, something like I say, something we've not heard. Like so, like the. Right, so Star Wars, um, Desert of Death, or something like that. Do you know what I mean? Something, yeah, I mean something yeah. sort of uh, go harking back to the whole serial roots as well. Yeah, something like that. Something, something quite cool, well, not corny, that's, that's but where Attack of the Clones came from. Yeah, that's what, that's I love sounded... Attack of the Clones. That's a Do great you... title. Yeah, uh, I don't know, not a film, announced, not but... a film. <laughs> When that was announced, Not I, was the film. Like, oh, I don't like that title. And I think no, I never that was have. perfect. Uh, I thought it was a perfect I, I title. I got where it, where it's coming from. It's totally yeah. it totally fits with the uh, and and I Saturday really like the Phantom Menace. I think the Phantom Menace is a great title. 
Yes, it's right as fact, well. Yeah. It's uh, better than and, separate claims. Yeah, and so, and oh, I think um, that, oh, here we go. This is a really well put together <laughs> thought for <Someone> Colin here. <laughs> Podcast gold. Um, <laughs> Is there an awards show for a um, podcast? Because we get one. There is one. Oh, there is a. Okay. So you need. You actually need viewers. Oh. And all <laughs> listeners and subscribers, and we don't have those. So when the awards are given out, we could get like the least watched show. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> all right. Well, let's go for that. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, oh yeah. Right. So so you put um a, a link on Facebook the other day or today for. Um, some posters for the prequels. Yes, yeah, they were, they cool. were beautiful. And maybe you should put them, flash them up on here in a minute, Jay, when, okay. with your magic editing skills, because they well, were just, wicked. I'll do them with the elevator music because it's a little bit easier for me. Okay, do some <laughs> elevator music. Do, 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 do. Um, so they are brilliant and they really cool and they made me want to watch the films again and then I realised no I don't want to watch the films again but brilliant posters and so something like that but that did inspire me for what this new film should be called something cool like that like um, um, I don't know Something of like Battle of the What was the um Gigantors. The original, what was the original rumoured title for episode seven? It was the ancient uh, what was it called now? The, do you remember this? It was the ancient something. No. I'll find it. I'll find it with the magic of the internet. What I don't want it to be called is um, the magic the dodo fear, or whatever those was. those bird things are called. <laughs> um, sea monsters. It was, yeah, it was or the deep. Called, the the, the rumour title was episode seven: the ancient fear. That was the original rumour title. Oh, I quite like that. And there's another mm. one that says the ancient order, but I don't, I don't think that yeah. was a rumoured one. But it's, yeah, so you know, it could be I mean, something I, like that. I, I quite, knows? actually, quite would like something like Rise of Rise, not Rise of a Sith, but Rise, uh, Rise of something, something. Because because what we want, <laughs> what you, what I want from this film is a parallel. Of Ky- Kylo Ren becoming what he's destined to become, mm. and and um, Ray becoming what she so something like destiny. Oh, of, okay, so, of, of something. So, you know, what des- do you think of Legacy of the Force? Yeah, that kind of fits with that. No, because Legacy of the Force has too many um, links to the old legend stories. Okay, so there's a whole there's a whole run right. of books. Destiny of the Force. <laughs> yeah, destiny. <laughs> not of the force, though. Like destiny. Destiny of the galaxy, or something. I don't know. Some, something that t- I don't know. I look. I ain't paid to do this. <laughs> Kathy, <laughs> if you want my ideas, send me some dosh. I think they know already, dude. <laughs> <laughs> do they? Do they? Do not they? Not when they hear my my fried gold. Jay, you can email us at forceconvo at gmail dot com. That's it. That's it. Correct, Jay. Correct. <laughs> um, what else can we do? Um, we talked on SoundCloud. about SoundCloud. So yeah. So well, now um, we're getting into the. So that is a up. bit of a so uh, <laughs> random related episode. Um, yes, you can find us at the place we just mentioned, which are Force Conversations on Facebook. Tweet us at um, Force Convo on Twitter using the hashtag You can uh, Force Convo. You can get me at the underscore letter J underscore tank and you can get Colin at Captain Colin um, we are on SoundCloud we are on yeah. iTunes yeah um, and the links will be below and yeah we are, and we, we, uh, we are also on the Taylor network of podcasts so again uh, it's the home of many great geeky podcasts um, some of which are double pay spread nothing's on no apologies Gotham by Geek, JK's Happy Hour, Go Trek Yourself, Nerd is Bond, and us. So I'm sure there's loads more. Um, and there are loads more. They're, they're brilliant. They're all fun and geeky. So definitely check those out. Um, but 
YouTube is the place. If you want to see my beautiful face, YouTube's where you need to be. If you're listening to the podcast there and you're thinking, that guy's got such an amazing voice, I bet his face is just as amazing. Why don't you check it out? We're on YouTube, Force Conversations, and it's probably the best video you'll ever see in your life. <laughs> you will not believe the production. The sets are amazing, aren't they, Jay? Oh, they're wonderful. So, so your, your, your mind's eye does not do this justice. Go and have a look at the video. And if you do, please like it. Hit that thumbs oh, up button. Please like subscribe, it. Subscribe. And, of course, leave us comments. Because yeah, I want YouTube little, money. If you press the little <laughs> bell there, um, you'll get a nice little notification to tell you whenever we upload something new. Yeah, yeah. Right, so that'll do it for us from this for this week. Um, that will. And until next week, may the force be with you. Punch it, Chewie! <laughs> oh, that's so cool! Where's my thing? I've got a thing, one sec. Let me do my thing. Oh, my thing. Uh... Oh, well. Ah! Alright. Let me do my chewing thing. <laughs> this is a great book, by the way. How to Speak Wookiee by um, Wookie Smith and illustrations by Jake. And you can find him on you can find him on uh, Instagram, Jake Detonator. He's a really cool guy. Okay.